It has one 12 volt battery on front of the unit. First fusible link back to the trailers is in this blue holder right here. We do have a hookup light for hooking up at nighttime. We also have another light on the tongue jack for hooking up at nighttime. And then your up and down button for running the jacks up or down to take it on and off the vehicle. Two 20 pound propane cylinders that are full, except for what we use to service the trailer. The arrow on the regulator is pointing towards this one over here. It's showing you that it's empty. As soon as we happen to open up the cylinder, should turn green. Click. As soon as this bottle on this side would happen to come empty, it's going to turn red inside the eye where it was at first. Indicate that the bottle is pointed to is empty and it's having to pick up from the one on the other side as long as the cylinder is open on top. Then all you have to do is flip it over to that side there, work off of that one while you take this one to town to have it refilled. We're going to go back to this one because that's the one I worked off of. There is also two tabs on the bottom of the bottle cover. There is a bungee cord that goes underneath there, underneath the metal rack to hold it in place. It also has the quick release at the top so that you don't have to take the cover off every time you want to get into the cylinders to turn them on or off. The rest of the stuff up here in the front is for your hitch package that we're not going to use. We're going to come right back up to the very front compartment. They have a light on either side that is a two-way light. It's motion sensored or on 24 seven. I got them turned to where they're motion sensored so when you open the compartment door, the light automatically comes on. We're gonna start up here at the top. It has a 110 outlet that is protected by the GFCI outlet in the bathroom. We have a park cable hookup and a satellite hookup. We also have our city water connect that you can hook to with the water hose and regulator and never have to fill the fresh water tank Work right off the water pressure going to that. Right to the right side of that is a battery disconnect. Since it has a 12 volt refrigerator and you're not using the trailer and you don't want your 12 volt refrigerator to pull your battery down, you turn the key to the off position and pull the key out. We also have an outside shower that gives you hot and cold running water to this side of the trailer. It is a quick disconnect hose, just like an air hose. It clicks into here, locks in place, gives you hot and cold running water on this side here. On the opposite side of the trailer, it hooks into a porch spray that gives you cold water only. There is a hole in the bottom compartment that you can bring your water hose and your cable lines up through so that you can close your main compartment door so none of your extra goodies are exposed. It also has a solar panel up on top that charges the battery on the front of the unit. And it digitally reads out exactly what's going to the battery. It shows you when it's 100% fully charged and tells you how many amps is drawn when it's not plugged into 110. We're going to slide right past that. You do have a freshwater tank fill so that if you're not at a water hookup, you can go ahead and fill your freshwater tank. It does also have a drain down behind the front jack on this side over here for draining that freshwater tank. It has, has the lug nest torqued at 100 foot pounds. I'm going to slide right back to this. The tires are also aired out to pressure, which is 80 pounds on the side of the tire cold. They also have the nitro gas in them instead of having air. But if you're out on the road and one would have to come low on you, you can put air in on top of it. But if you want the pure nitro fill, you have to take it back to like a plaza tire or a car dealership, have them suck the air out that you put in and put gas back into the tire. It's supposed to give you a better mileage on the vehicle towing and longer life of the tires on the trailer. It is also a 50 amp service, not 30 amp service. Goes in, makes a quarter of a turn. The opposite end has a blue light on it, indicating that it has 110 coming through it. On your termination valve, the very back three inch valve is your toilet water only. The gray valve in the front is your gray tank two, which is your kitchen sink water. The gray handle in the back is your gray one, and it is your bathroom sink and shower water.
We'll put that termination cap on here in just a minute. Inside of here, there is the same way. We have a motion sensor light on the left-hand side of the compartment that comes on when you open up the door. On the right side of the compartment, there's four screws in this panel here. If you take those four screws out, accesses you into the water pump and the back of the hot water heater. On the water pump, there's a one white valve set up bypass for winterizing. On the back of the hot water heater, it has two white valves. Both of those white valves are turned in line with the hot water heater, letting the hot cold water come in the bottom and hot water come out the top. When you get ready to winterize, they get turned sideways, which allows it to make a loop behind the hot water heater so that you don't have to fill it with antifreeze. We also have a black tank flush so that while you're dumping your holding tanks, once all the nasties are out of the black tank, you can have a water hose and a regulator to this, turn water pressure onto it, it has a little aerator on the inside of the black tank, spins around, just helps clean more of the debris out of the black tank only. As we step around the side, hot water heater is gas and electric. The electric switch is in the lower left-hand corner on the outside. Your gas switch is gonna be on your monitor panel on the inside. But before you turn either source of heat on, you wanna pop the pop-off valve, make sure you have water coming out of the top of it before you turn it on electric or gas. Also has an inch and a sixteenth drain plug down here in the bottom. The drain plug is actually an anode rod. And what an anode rod does is it draws all the impurities out of the water to that rod, eats up that rod instead of eating up the inside of the tank. Anytime the steel rod in the center is showing, it's time to replace it. But that is where you'll drain the hot water heater in between trips and for winterizing and dewinterizing purposes. We're gonna go up to the top. It is fixed for a Lippert extendable ladder. It is also prepped for a backup camera. It's got a spare tire on the back that's not been torqued on, it's been put on with a wrench, but it is aired up to pressure, which is 80 pounds on the side of the tire cold. We're gonna step around this side over here. It does have four BL jacks on all four corners. There is a handle in the front compartment up here for manually cranking those up or down. We have access into the bathroom through a back door. Steps on it will fold out. We also have a low water drain point. For winterizing purposes only, the red side is the hot side of the water system. The blue side is the cold side of the water system. This is that port spray that that blue hose in the front water fill compartment comes over. It clicks into this side over here but only gives you cold water on this side of the trailer. It does not have hot water to it. Two outside speakers. I'll have to show you more about the speakers when we get to the inside. Your next connection up is the outside of the furnace. It's gonna suck cold air in the top, hot air at the bottom. I always suggest putting the mud dauber screen over the outside of the furnace. For the simple fact that mud dauber screen is less than 15 bucks. It's $145 an hour for every hour that we have to take the furnace out to clean the mud dauber's out. So that $15 investment's worth its weight in gold, if you ask me. There is also another 110 outlet on this side over here, and a Clark cable hookup or antenna hookup here to the side so that you can watch the ball game underneath the canopy. We're gonna go to the outside kitchenette. It does have a magnet that holds the lid up in the refrigerator on the outside. It is 110 only, has to be plugged into 110 for it to work. But the controls for it are in the upper left hand corner. Outside grill pulls loose down here at the back. Does have a quick disconnect hose that hooks to the connection here in the back and the connection on the frame down under. When it hooks to the connection down under, it has a T handle on the top that has to be turned in line with the hose for it having gas coming from the propane bottles up front to the outside grill. All the paperwork for the grills to land here on the top of it. It's pretty simple. Push it in, click it one time, sit there and let it. Gas come towards the outside of it, turn it back off, click it the second time and it should light. You always have to let the gas come from the connection from the frame up to the outside grill itself. Here again, we're gonna pull the lid down. We're gonna walk right past that. In the front compartment on this side over here, there is the two handles. 
The little s collared handle is for the tongue jack on the front of the trailer. The bigger handle is for the balance jacks on all four corners. It also has a motion sensor or on 24 light on this side over here. It all depends on the way you flip the switch. I like to leave them towards motion sensor so that whenever you open the compartment door, the light automatically comes on. We're going to go back to the front door. We're going to lift the handle up, pull it sideways. We're going to open up the front door. All the way open. A little blue handle on the left side of the steps loosens the steps from the door frame. As it comes out, it has a little push button underneath each one of the legs, 15 to 18 holes on the legs for adjustment. The main thing when the steps come out, the trailer has to be on site, side to side level, front to back level. Then the steps come down, it has to lay flat in the threshold so that the front door fits over the top of it properly without scraping. Once the steps are out, the door is shut. Don't change the pitch of the trailer front to back. It will push the steps up into the bottom of the door. Once it gets out, you're going to adjust the legs so they're solid that you're walking on them. You're going to come in. It does have a working fire extinguisher on the right hand side as we come in. I'm going to go ahead and run the slide room out. On the slide room, you want to make sure that there's not a tree parked on that side or somebody's got a trailer parked too close to you. We've already had it out here today, so we know that it will open. We're going to come back up to the monitor panel. We're going to check the battery life, shows you that it's fully charged. To get an accurate reading on the battery, you need to have the 110 line unplugged and then push the button. Fresh water tank, it's showing you that it's still full, almost two thirds. Black tank showing you that it's empty, that's just toilet water. Gray tank one will be your bathroom sink and shower. Gray tank two will be your kitchen sink water only. The first red button on the Left hand side turns the water pump on between the fresh water tank and the faucets. The second red button turns the gas side of the hot water heater on. When you turn it on, the little red light up the top comes on, door side fault light. It's gonna stay on for about a minute. Once a minute's up, it's gonna go off. Then the hot water heater will go through three lighting processes to light on gas. For any reason it does not light on gas, that little red light's gonna come right back on. We're gonna go to the first black switch here that turns the center of all lights between the living and the kitchen area on. The second black switch turns the LED lights on on the awning. And then we're going to go ahead and run that awning out. Here again, it's also good to make sure that the trailer is not up against a tree or that you're not too close to the trailer sitting in front of you so the awning gets fully extended. On each one of the arms, there is a pinch point down at the bottom that you can pull down against and then tighten up the black knob. We'll pull down against it, we'll tighten up the black knob, which puts the pitch of the rain coming off this corner here. You can do the same thing with the back arm. It's easier on the back arm because you can have the steps out and you can reach the little bar here at the bottom. We'll loosen that back up, allows that to slide back out so that when the awning goes back in, it lays inside the cradle on the arms. does have a 110 outlet up underneath the kitchen sink. A little push button for the light above the sink turns it on by hand. We're going to come into the top drawer. There's two sets of keys. One purple key does the front door lock and deadbolt. The other purple key does the back door lock and deadbolt. And then you have a 751 key that does all your outside compartments. All the rest of the paperwork was found in the trailers in this top drawer. We're going to come to the microwave next. It does have a clock button. Hit the clock sign. Set the time on the clock. Hit the clock again to the two center eyes is flashing. The reason I set the time on the microwave is you can tell if the trailer's lost 110 power coming to it if it doesn't have the right time. We do have a light for stove top and a fan. Glass stove top. Folds up two times up out of the way. A little button on the right hand side illuminates the valves. You're going to turn it to where it says high. 
using the striker on the left hand side to light all three of the burners up on top. Same way with your oven button. You're going to turn it to where it says pilot on, hold down on the button, using the striker on the left hand side for it to light. Once the pilot's lit, let it run for about a minute, then you can dial your temperature up to whatever you want. If you flip that button on the right hand side to the lower connection, it also gives you a light down in the oven so you can see what you're baking. The brown vent down here at the bottom is a heat vent from the furnace. We're going to open up the breaker box and they are marked on the lid from the top to the bottom with your 30 amp main being first, your AC being next as it comes across this way, and your car fuses are marked on the right hand side. And it gives you a couple spots down at the bottom that are still empty in case you wanted to add another 12 volt appliance to the trailer. We're going to come up to the ice box. It does have a travel lock for traveling. Flips over to the side. Two thermostats up in here. You got one in the very top. If you turn it to where it says colder, it will keep all the cold air in the freezer section until it gets to where it's making ice up in top. For it to have cold air coming down into the bottom of the refrigerator, you have to turn it about middle ways or back to where it says colder. And then you have push buttons in the refrigerator for setting the temperature on it. But that set button is your on and off button for the refrigerator. We're going to close it. We're going to lock it back up. It does have a pretty good sized pantry off to the right hand side of the refrigerator. No light in it. We're going to come into the bathroom area. It does have a light switch on the wall that turns the light above us on. We also have our 110 GFCI outlet in the bathroom that protects all the 110 outlets in the trailer inside and out. We have another brown vent on the bottom of the sink cabinet that brings heat into the bathroom area. We also have a white vent in the ceiling that brings air into the bathroom area. Black knurled knob cranks up. Little black button turns the fan on for pulling the moisture out while you're showering. And you also have your shower just like you have at home. It has hot water on the left side, cold water on the right side. A little door opens up, clips into place. Has a little connection on the inside that you can grip onto to open it back up. Has a single foot flush on the right hand side of the toilet in the bathroom area. Push halfway down, fills with water. Push all the way down, fills and dumps. And it is marked on the back of the lid. We're going to come out of the bathroom area over into the bunk area. Each one of the bunks has a push button light in the ceiling. We also have a 110 outlet on each bunk and a USB port on each bunk. Down here is the same way. Light on the side of the wall there, 110 outlet and a USB port. But the bottom bunk has a fire escape window. They are pretty easy to operate. Grab a hold of the red tab on the screen, pulling it loose. Then the red handle down below it will come up and go through the bottom of the window frame all the way through so that you can access out through that window there. Also has a ladder for climbing up to the top bunk. We're going to come over into the kitchen area. The two lights above the table have to be turned on by hand. They have little push buttons in the center of those. The tabletop will come off the two pedestals, go between the two benches. You'll take the two back cushions and put over the top of the table for a smaller bed there. We also have a USB port between the kitchen table area and the couch. Same way with the lights here in the couch, they all have to be turned on by hand. We'll push button in them. Couch will butterfly out into a bed. We're going to come up to the TV entertainment center. We're going to show you the fireplace remote first. It has a red button on it that turns it on. Then you have a temperature control that sets your temperature. Got a little shiny rock button down at the bottom. Changes the color of the rocks. I guess I got to get down a little bit lower. And if you turn it to the green setting, it will rotate between all four colors on the rocks. The little flame is your flames. You can change them from between one and four. There's all red, there's all blue, there's red again, there's a red and blue mixture. Also has a timer on it that you can start out with a half hour up to nine hours so that if you're worried about falling asleep, the fireplace will shut itself off. We're going to go ahead and turn it back off with the red button. 
the middle size remote operates the stereo turns it on and off we're going to turn it back on and then we have zones one and two zone one is inside zone two is your outside speakers it also has a USB port on it has a headphone set up and an HDMI cord hookup the bigger remote does the TV we'll turn it on I think I got 42 channels on the TV working off the booster behind the TV and the antenna on top it's all the St. Louis channels and it takes it a minute to go through its little rigmarole since it is a smart TV once all the little curlies and squiggles and circles gets done it should pop up to a St. Louis TV station That station's about 80 miles away from here. That's working off the booster and the antenna on top of the trailer. And I think I got 42 channels when I did my auto scan on the channels. We'll go ahead and turn it back off. It does also have a working LP detector down here at the bottom and carbon monoxide. If for any reason it smells LP, it gives you one continuous buzz that will drive you crazy. If it's smelling carbon monoxide, it beeps four times, two times in a row. We also have a smoke detector as we come into the unit, right above my head here. We're going to come up to the thermostat. We're going to turn it all the way off. We're going to turn it back on. It gives you your fan speed, auto, high, low. You always run it, either one of the appliances in the auto position. Hit the mode button one more time. It shows you the little snowflake down in the lower right hand corner. You'll dial your temperature down for it. Hit your mode button one more time. It has furnace in the lower left hand corner. Hit your mode button one more time and it says off in the lower right hand corner. So we're going to go right back up to the little snowflake. Once we come into the master bedroom, it does have a light switch on the wall that turns the two lights above the foot of the bed on. The two above the head of the board has to be turned on by hand. We have another place for a TV up here, a 110 outlet to plug it into, and a park cable or antenna hookup to hook the TV to. We also have a vent in the ceiling that cranks up and doesn't have the fan in it. We have a 110 outlet on either side of the bed and a USB port on either side of the bed. We also have a fire escape window on the off door side. Works just like the one in the bunk room does. Grab a little red tab here, pulls the screen loose. Red handle here comes loose, slides out the side, and we'll go all the way through the frame on the door or window. Pull it back in place, clip it back up. I'll put this back on in a minute. It does have storage on either side for clothes. Has storage up above for extra pillows and blankets. Has a white vent in the ceiling to bring in air conditioning into the master bedroom. And also has a brown vent on the wall here bringing heat into the master bedroom. And it does have pretty good sized storage up underneath it. Store a lot of stuff in there. We're going to pull the bed back down. It's going to slam down since it is worked by the struts. Also has a marker up here at the top that marks where your antenna is up on the roof. And that is basically everything on your trailer. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them the best that I can. Thank you for your time.